an oral history of the church. I'm Jonathan McCormick. And I'm Adam Chrisman. An oral history of the church is a conversational history podcast. This first volume is an oral history of the campus relocation of Golden Gate Baptist Theological Seminary's main campus from Mill Valley, California to Ontario, California. The fifth episode for this volume is an interview with previous Golden Gate Academy Preschool director and current administrator, Christy Zerbst. I think this is a really interesting interview. Managing and teaching preschool kids is not easy. There's a lot more than just sitting down with the kid and playing with them to yeah. have an effective preschool. Right. It really is education. Children do learn through play, but there's there's a lot of planning and foresight and education that goes on to making sure that that happens seamlessly. Absolutely. Yeah, Christy is um, is someone who has been around for more than a few years. She's been around since two thousand, as she says in the interview, two thousand and four. So, having been involved with Golden Gate Academy for 12 years now, gives her a very significant perspective on the seminary itself, as well as, of course, the preschool and the surrounding neighboring community. And that relationship with the parents of the children that she's educating does give her a different view of how and why the events of the last few years have gone down. Yeah, I think that's right. Well, for the listeners, it, I would point out to pay attention to her her handling of really two elements that interact. One doing fundraising for a preschool. It's a unique method or avenue or arena for fundraising. It's not like fundraising for just any... It's it's not just the same as any other kind of fundraising. True. And then the interaction of, of the, the day-to-day concerns of the preschool with the announcement of the sale and how that moment kind of went down. That's what I would point to. For those of our listeners who have interests in ministry leadership and organizational leadership, one of the key components of being an effective leader, I believe, is having clearly articulated objectives for your organization. Mm -hmm. Why does the organization exist? And even though we never asked her, why does GGA exist? She kept coming back to what is clearly an internalized understanding of mission and purpose for that organization. Right. That's absolutely true. She she exudes great leadership. So on that note, let's take a listen to Christy Zerbst. This is Adam Christman and Jonathan McCormick. Interviewing Christy Zerbst on May 2nd, 2016. This interview is taking place in the middle conference room of the Golden Gate Baptist Theological Seminary Library at 201 Seminary Drive, Mill Valley, California. Christy, thank you so much for sitting down with us. We really appreciate your time. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, we're happy to. We're excited to, to talk to you about your experiences here. Yeah. Uh, so our first question, just to kick it right off, is how did you first hear about Golden Gate Seminary? Um, so I first heard about Golden Gate Seminary uh, when I was a part of the uh, Strawberry Community Church. Um, it was a little church that was started by Bryce Butler, mm-hmm. who was a, a you know a, a, a seminary student, um, and I had heard about the the church from another friend and. Um, I was actually living out in the East Bay, and so mm-hmm. I would drive all the way from the East Bay to <laughs> co- go to church, mm-hmm. you know, and of course, through the church, it was lots of seminary um, 
uh, seminary students and families mm-hmm. and got to know about the seminary at that point. Yeah. So. All right. Uh, well, how did you first come to study or work here? So with uh, knowing some of the people at the church, one of the director of the preschool okay. that was on the seminary campus, mm-hmm. the Golden Gate Academy, uh, the director was part of the church. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was actually working at a school in the East Bay, and she, uh, I told her I was actually going to be looking for another job and would like to move over into this area. Mm-hmm. And she said, well, this is perfect. We actually have a opening. Um, and I, I told her I'd be interested in anything, teaching, mm-hmm. assisting. Oh, yeah. um, and she was like, well, we actually have an assistant director position opening up. Um, mm-hmm. So I was like, that's perfect. Um, <laughs> Who was the director at the time? Uh, the director at the time was Colleen Cope. Okay. Um, and the assistant director at the time was Jessica Holmes. Um, so Colleen was going to be moving, and Jessica was going to be stepping up as director. So they were going to be hiring a assistant director. Mm-hmm. And I was a current director at a school in the East Bay. And so this ended up being a perfect opportunity for me to move over. Um, so I actually came in as the assistant director with the Golden Gate Academy. Mm-hmm. So, um, What year did you say that was? Uh, that was in 2004. So... Um, the year Dr. Orge came in, mm. we all came in together. <laughs> so uh, it was um, a big year. I didn't know all the transitions that were happening with the seminary when I got the job, um, mm. but uh, uh, it was it was great. <laughs> so very good. And you also studied here as well as being yes. working here. Yes. Yes. So after um, coming on as a full time employee. Um, you know, there's the amazing benefit that you get to get, go to school, uh, you get a classes for free as yeah. well. Um, so, which was amazing because I had always thought and dreamed about going to seminary to graduate school, but never mm-hmm. knew how or when. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, so God really just used this as an answer to prayer and said, this is how you're going to do it. <laughs> it just served right up. <laughs> and it did. So I, I did start um, with the early childhood education classes and then moved on to the uh, education leadership and uh, graduated in 2008. Cool. So. Very cool. Very cool. And what... Uh, What's your official title now here at the center? Yes. So currently it is, I'm just an adjunct professor teaching um, some of the, a couple of the early childhood education classes. Mm-hmm. Um, I am also, I also have been helping out at the preschool with the new um, director. I, I came in as the assistant director, did that for a couple years, and then when Jessica left, when she moved, I stepped up as director. So, and did that till till about 2000, um, it was in 2014, Uh, so a couple years ago is when Mm -hmm. I actually stepped down from directing full-time, just so I could work part-time and have some more time with my family. Um, So, so that was my main (laughs) title, Mm -hmm. most of my time here was director of Mm -hmm. of the preschool, um, but and I started teaching the early childhood classes in 2008. Oh, wow. Was the first uh, one of the first education classes I've taught. Yeah. So I've been been teaching those ever since as well. And that's mm-hmm. I would say probably my primary presence. I believe 2014 um, was when my daughter Nicole left GGA too because okay. she graduated out. <laughs> yeah, I think you two finished at the same. Yeah, time. Yeah, I think we both finished at the same time, and um, it was it was a really really hard decision um, sure. for me. But uh, I think uh, the family needs uh, definitely uh, showed that this that's where what I needed to do. So it was mm. it was a hard release, but uh, I knew that that's where God was uh, wanting me to do. So. Yeah, I understand that. Right, so what are your favorite memories of uh, studying here or working here at this location? I don't know. If, you know, we, we ask this of all of the people we interview, mm-hmm. and many of them have been to the other campuses and, you mm-hmm. know, had significant experiences at the other campuses. Mm-hmm. But um, this is the one that's been sold and uh, that's being relocated to yeah. two other locations. Mm-hmm. So um, maybe it's an easier question for you, but what are some of your favorite memories yeah. of studying or working here? 
Well, um, this is my only experience with the with the Golden Gate Seminary. Um, this this campus. Um, I mean, what's not to love? <laughs> it's a, an amazing piece of land. Um, I love the history of it. I love the transformations it's seen. I've seen. I love the lack of transformation, the history that you see in it. Yeah. Um, so those are some of the amazing aspects of the of the campus itself. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, but you know, really, I mean, obviously, my main experience is with the with is with the preschool, sure. um, and my favorite memories are the 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 relationships that I've formed with families and children mm-hmm. in the community. Um, just, I mean, it, the the preschool has been such an amazing ministry for the seminary. Yeah. Um, you know, I think it's been been made clear that the seminary they're they're not a ministry they're not a church that's ministering to the camp you know to their community um they're here to train those that minister Mm -hmm. um but they're not you know going to be out there you know serving those around them like as their main focus but the preschool it really has been that aspect of the seminary sure um and just being the only Christian preschool here in Southern Marin, mm-hmm. um, it has just had an amazing presence. So just all of those memories from all the years, and now I'm I'm working in in the community in the mm-hmm. public schools, um, doing some of that on the part time, and seeing my families that you know were with me eight ten years ago, mm-hmm. and where they are now, and the impact that this school has had on them and how Mm. the Lord has stuck with them. Um, You know, whether they may not necessarily be actively in a church, but they, they see me and they still have that. There's Mm -hmm. a softening in them. Mm -hmm. Um, So I, those are some of my favorite memories. Mm. Wow. Well, what is uh, your most prized achievement that you earned while at this campus? And you can take that in any way, Uh, a literal (laughs) award or, um, um, something you felt you learned or mm-hmm. um, it's been answered in a, in a variety of ways so far with yeah. the folks we've interviewed. So um, please feel free to you know, yeah. take that however you will. I would say just, I am most proud of the work that, that, that I've done and that we've done through mm-hmm. the preschool. Um, the, the families that we've reached yeah. for Christ. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's mm-hmm. what we're here doing. That's yeah. what, um, that right there, that impact on the loss that, yeah. um, on the loss here in the community, that's what I, um, take most, not pride cause it's, it's all through Christ that mm-hmm. this has happened, but, um, most joy perhaps. Most joy. Yeah. Um, and that, you know, I mean, there's, there's little things that, that, that we've done, like whether it was raising funds to get a new playground <laughs> that was a huge <laughs> yeah. undertaking for many years but being able to see that and mm-hmm. how you know bringing families together under to to support mm-hmm. this cause to you know create a a better environment and space for their kids and then be able to you know design it and develop it and construct it you know mm-hmm. um that i mean that was one of my what was it like before the construction, and what what was your goal in it, and what uh-huh. what happened with that? Um, so this, I mean, uh, that that was the one of the uh, playgrounds. So yes. the outside space um, it just was really run down. It oh, was yeah. small. Um, so one of the capital projects that we wanted to do was to improve the playground, mm-hmm. and so um, you know, I mean, it was nearly a hundred thousand dollar. Um, project was which, which is a lot for this little school yeah. Yeah. Um, but we we did it and we expanded it and completely redid it and it has been a um, uh, a great little jewel yeah. of, of accomplishment and uh, peace for the for the families that come in and have been able to enjoy it throughout these years absolutely so yeah I always felt great about my kids playing on that playground when mm-hmm. uh, my Firstborn daughter was there, and then when my uh, middle child started going and would go and play with her big sister for a few minutes over yeah. there, and that sort of thing. Yeah, you know, and that's we want to be able to create amazing, safe places um, yeah. 
that, uh, you know, and obviously we do it all for the Lord. Mm -hmm. We want to put out a a foot of excellence for the Lord. And um, so it was neat to be able to kind of do that. Mm -hmm. So. Were you involved with the, if I remember right, I think you were, right, in the other, the more public playground located near the basketball courts? The the one for the seminary, not not really. Not really? Not okay. really. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, I didn't really have um, much involvement oh, okay. in that one. Okay. okay. Um, I must have misheard. Oh, <laughs> you know, playgrounds and me kind of yeah. go together. <laughs> I was doing it for a while, so, but... Uh, before the announced sale of the Mill Valley campus on April 1st, 2014, uh, what was your impression of the relationship between the seminary and the, the surrounding community, both our, our immediate neighborhood and our general relationship with yeah. people in Marin? Um, well, as of the April 1st, 2014 <laughs> announcement, you know, just prior to that, mm-hmm. I mean, it was, um, it, I saw it as contentious because, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, the, the community saw some of the changes that the seminary improvements, the seminary is wanting to make, and they fought against that. Mm-hmm. Um, so within that immediate year to whatever it was that they were trying to work on that, it was pretty contentious before that I mean since I mean I've been here since 2004 mm-hmm. um, you know it was yeah. always pretty amicable and mm. you know it, people really enjoyed the the seminary students that were mm-hmm. on the campus I mean I think even now the community still really enjoys the the seminary community but um, you know it was so it depends on exactly when are you talking prior to April 1st, <laughs> yeah. um, in yeah. the year or two right before or even before that. Mm-hmm. Um, but, I mean, ha- that's primarily our, um, our, our clientele is this immediate community. Right. So, I mean, even going through those one or two years before the sale where it was quote-unquote contentious, yeah. um, you know, I, I felt like the families that were attending the preschool were primarily uh, still supportive. I mean, there was actually oh, a couple families. Really nice. Yeah, there were a couple of families that were um, kind of l- heading up the 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 chain the for the changes not to happen. Sure, sure. <laughs> so those were kind of always interesting conversations. Yeah, yeah. With but that many people, you're bound to get a your, variety. A of variety, perspectives. but yeah. yeah. But I would say for for the most part, I mean, I think. Because because of the preschool, there was they they knew us. Yeah, they they exactly. knew there's more of that human connection, and mm-hmm. so I think there was a little bit more of softness um, yeah. for us. Mm-hmm. And I, if I can pause just for a moment, I want to hover on the fact that the school has a very solid reputation as a preschool. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. The one of the first things I learned about GGA when I came here, uh, GGA again, it's Golden Gate Academy for the listeners who may not know. One of the first things I learned about it when I got here as a student was there's a wait list to get in. <laughs> mm-hmm. You can't just walk up and yeah. enroll your kid for next week. Yeah. You have to uh, get on that list and um, hope that kids graduate or that, you know, that families shuffle their decision making on what they want Move their away. kids to do so that you can get in mm-hmm. um, because it's it's performed so excellently. Yeah. Um, and... Um, I feel that's been consistent over mm. the years. No, uh, no, that's great. And from my experience, m- when my daughter went through, I thought it was awesome. I was very appreciative mm-hmm. of everything you guys did. Yeah. Um, to to teach her and and help her grow as a person, mm-hmm. and um, I feel like she was more than equipped to get into kindergarten. You know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and I will say <laughs> also, there's a class that you take at at least at this seminary, called Principles and Approaches to Bible Teaching. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And when I took it, it was with Dr. Shira Malik, yeah. um, the wife of my doctoral advisor, who required us to teach a preschool lesson, a teenager-aged uh, lesson, and then a, an adult-oriented lesson. And before we got to teach the preschool one, we had to observe. And she preferred that we work out something with you guys to go observe Mm -hmm. uh, a professional doing what they do. Yeah. Um, And what I did, I went with, I think, two or three others, and I sat in on the the third-year class. Mm -hmm. So for the listener who may not know, it's it's a three-year preschool 
Um, so I sat in in the five-year-old's class mm -hmm. and saw um, Wilson. Aaron Wilson. Aaron Wilson. Aaron Wilson. Teaching mm -hmm. uh, Bible time mm -hmm. to the kids. And I was just blown away with mm -hmm. how well she kept their attention and how positive she Engaged. was with it. She had no struggles. It, it seemed effortless mm -hmm. for her to connect with them and um, teach them this little slice of scripture mm -hmm. um, in that, you know, 20 minutes or whatever, yeah. you know, the different activities were in that window. Yeah. Um, so this, the, the, the preschool itself has such a solid reputation. And um, I don't know if it was that way when you arrived or what, but it mm -hmm. certainly was when I got here in mm -hmm. 2006, mm -hmm. uh, two mm -hmm. years after you had been involved. Yeah. Um, and it's still that way today is my mm -hmm. understanding that yeah. it's still a wait list and, mm -hmm. and so on. Yeah, no, and that's one of the the you know another amazing aspects of the of the preschools that you know, we're not just here to serve the community. Um, the other mich, uh, mission statement driven <laughs> um, aspect of the of the preschools that we're also a teaching school. We're we're here for students to come in and learn from other teachers on how to teach and how to mm -hmm. how to run a preschool, mm -hmm. um, which is where the early childhood mm -hmm. education classes come in. And, and the blessing that we've had of having amazing teachers, um, yeah. highly qualified <laughs> teachers, teachers that have their master degrees. I mean, right. that, that doesn't happen in preschools. So... Um, so there's definitely been a lot of blessings with that and, and the reputation in the community. Um, it's, it's very, uh, it's, I'm, I'm so proud to be part of it. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, I, even down to one of the, the local elementary school kindergarten teacher has sent both of her kids <laughs> through our school because it has such a great reputation. Oh, and, wow. um, and that's part of the outreach that yeah. this school, an impact this mm -hmm. school has had on this community. Um, mm -hmm. that I feel like the seminary can be very um, joyful in. Mm -hmm. So Certainly. And a question about Golden Gate Academy's future, mm -hmm. um, just uh, if we can. Um, with the, the, the uh, changeover of ownership, with the... the the keys being handed over from the seminary to the new owners this summer. Um, it is my understanding that Golden Gate Academy is going to disincorporate as that particular body and that those uh, staffers who are wanting to stay are going to uh, incorporate a new preschool. Um, mm -hmm. Also, actually, at this location, leasing the space from the new owners. Is that correct? Yes. So the, the new director, she has a passion for continuing a Christian preschool here in Southern Marin. Mm -hmm. So she is working on um, getting her own license um, and continuing a Christian preschool here um, in the same space mm -hmm. um, and continuing that. So. Yeah. That's awesome. And that's, what is the name of the, the new school? I keep forgetting it. <laughs> uh, so it'll be GGA Kids Marin. Okay. So um, obviously it couldn't be the same. Sure, um, sure. But uh, Christina Jack or Jackson or Marshall now, right, right, right. Um, she wanted to have um, some type of remembrance of mm -hmm. the history of the school that she's going to be continuing, where it came from. So, I mean, the... It's kind of known out in the out in the community as GGA um, Gold, from Golden Gate Academy. Uh -huh. So yeah. she wanted to keep the GGA as part of remembrance of the history of what where it came from. That's awesome. Will you just question? Do you have any plans at this time to be? Uh... In, serving in any capacity at GGA Kids Marin? You know, we're kind of working through that, trying to figure out, um, sure, you know, what, what her needs are. I know she's going to be starting pretty minimal, um, mm -hmm. you know, as she kind of takes over um, this first year. So uh, so not, not really sure yet. Okay. But, um, you know, my passion is uh, early childhood edu Christian education here in, in Southern Marin. So, um, so if there's... Uh, if there's going to be a, a place for me, you know, I would love to be able to be a part of it. Um, but I am, I am also, I am also having a baby uh, in the fall. <laughs> so, um, so, you know, with my, my first baby on the way, I haven't, uh, it's been a little bit hard to make commitments. <laughs> right. So I'm like, okay, we'll at least get past 
giving birth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then seeing what, what we're able to do. So It's usually a good milestone yeah. for decision making. Yeah, yeah. So I, I was like, I won't commit to anything sure. full time right sure. now. Sure, that's awesome. I did so. not know. Oh, yes, thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, Jonathan's having his first this summer mm-hmm. in June. June 6th. Yes. So coming right along quickly. Yes. <laughs> The, the life will change, yeah. <laughs> so I just got to figure out how. How, yeah. how, how much is it going to change? Right. So. <laughs> how, how long has GGA been in operation? Yeah, so the history actually starts back from when the seminary started. Um, it's great. We actually have pictures from, gosh, it was so at 1958, 59, um, mm. of... You know the preschool rooms being used. It, it initially started as a child care center mm-hmm. for seminary students, um, so it was only seminary students. But then throughout the years, um, you know, it was opened up to the community um, and kind of. And Dr. Shara Melick was pretty um, uh, formidable in in what. The, the school you see now, mm-hmm. um, she kind of came in and made a lot of positive changes. Um, so that was probably at least probably 20 years ago um, and made a lot of good positive changes to mm. what you see now. And so, uh, um, you know, me as a director, I mean, I, it did go through a lot of um changes in the directorship mm-hmm. um and i've actually been one of the, the longest standing directors um that that had served um gga mm-hmm. um but you know i mean a lot of what i had to do was just keep up with what dr Mellick, <laughs> you know what she did and yeah. you know we made some other changes improves improvements and things like that but uh, but i would say she was actually very um poignant in the history of gga as well do you know when it began functioning as a practicum site for student training? Mm, mm-hmm. uh-huh. That was really I, I from Dr. Mellick because okay. uh, she came in and she wanted to start an early childhood education classes and you know also saw this as a great opportunity to have it as a, a, a learning um, a learning a place of learning for seminary graduate students as well. Yeah. So. Okay. Since I got here, I've always heard appreciative words about taking those classes and getting that um is that a certificate is that right that it yeah. coincides with whatever uh, other other degree that they're doing at the same time is that right right so they they had it as a, a certificate program mm-hmm. where you can either you can come and just get the certificate oh, okay. or you can get it as an addition to your degree okay. um so uh you know and so that's that's what it's been in the traditional sense gotcha um, Do you want to get back to the questions? About yes, the, the back, to the, <laughs> back to the campus questions. Um, how, if at all, do you think the that relationship between the the community and the the seminary and GGA as well um, changed after the announcement on June first? Um, I mean, April. 1st. April first. Yes, I was with you. <laughs> um, how how did the how did the uh, the relationship with the community change? Yeah, after so April once 1st? the sale was announced, did that shift how the neighborhood was interacting with GGA? Uh, you know, um, like, did, did tone change? Did Was it content? Anything like that? There was definitely, I mean, just as, as the school, the impact mm-hmm. of the school, people were like, oh, you're going to be shutting down, <laughs> you know, like... So, I mean, there was a couple, we did have a, we didn't lose many, but there were a few families that went ahead and pulled Mm -hmm. their children Mm -hmm. um, because they didn't want to have, they didn't know the, you know, it was an uncertain future, Um, especially in those first few months after the seminary um, was closing. And that that was one thing. um, And that was actually April 1st, 2014 was when um, the the seminary, you know, announced Mm -hmm. that they were going to be closing. Um, And then I actually, the following month is when I stepped down. So, you know, because of some family, uh, family things. And so it was, that was kind of unfortunate timing um, because the, 
the, the families at the preschool were really worried <laughs> because it was the, you know, the announcement and then the director quits. And yeah. I mean, we had an amazing director be able to step right back into it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, you know, we had some talk of trying to, you know, go in together uh, to continue the school. Um, <laughs> You know, as it's come throughout you know, the last couple of years, she's going to just, you know, mm-hmm. it's, it'll be just her school. Um, but yeah, that that was that was kind of a <laughs> impact. But I, I would say um, it was just all kind of an uncertain yeah. relationship. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so that makes sense. We're uh, we ask this of everybody. Uh, some people <laughs> have surprised us with how much they were in on it so some do not but were you in on the discussions surrounding the potential sale at all oh no no, no <laughs> i i was i was completely shocked by okay, it okay so um, were there any unofficial conversations you had just like with your friends like between i think it was either december 09 or 10, or 10 mm-hmm. when there was the big meeting that was actually on local television and oh, mm-hmm. people were presenting. I don't know, do you recall that step? A, a little was, bit. There was those some, were responses yeah. to the proposed new master plan. Yes, I remember um, that. Like, was, were there any kind of conversations between even just you and your friends about, like, what about selling the campus? Like, No. Not really? No. <laughs> no. You know, and at this point, as of April 1st, 2014, we were still fundraising for – more money to improve the playground oh, yeah, which yeah. you know on april 1st was the announcement april 4th is when we actually had our huge pancake breakfast you know <laughs> i mean and so that had been been planned for right. you know months before yeah. that so i mean i was i was actually really shocked i was like oh my gosh i can't believe we've been doing all this planning to raise money for wow. something that's going to be shutting down so that was that I was forgotten. a little, yeah, that was, the timing of that was a little odd. <laughs> um, so, I mean, obviously we cut the fundraising part of our event mm-hmm. and just made it a fun event, which yeah. made it a little bit easier, but there was sure. still, um, and we were, so we were doing a little fundraising with that, but then uh, this the families actually for the couple years prior to that, um, uh, were they had a, a fee, a capital improvement fee that they always paid into, an, an mm. annual fee that they paid into each year. So that was still going. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean, so I was a little shocked from the administration that they allowed all this fundraising to be happening, um, you know, knowing mm. that they were going to be, I mean, they, they knew at least a long time prior to April 1st, right. at least within that year. I mean, I don't know how much prior that that was going to be happening. But, I mean, I do understand that, you know, they couldn't, there was only so much they could say, and they mm-hmm. had to kind of wait things out. But, um, so that that was definitely a shock to me. And um, some, almost some damage control I had to do with the parents sure. yeah. um, on that. Like, we're giving this money, and, you know, <laughs> we're not going to get it back, but it's not going anywhere. So so I had to kind of manage that, yeah. uh, which, was, which was a lot at the time. But... Um, but yeah, but it's, yeah. Wow. Well, what was, what was your personal opinion about the sale at the time? Did you think that was a good idea or a, like a bad idea or, you know, I think after the, yeah. Oh, okay. The shock. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I mean, I, I honestly, I thought it was a great idea. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I completely understand, um, the seminaries take an approach on it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I know how much, uh, work they, they had been trying to do with the community in the year or two prior. Um, so I know that that was, I know that was hard, um, or even years, wherever, you know, some of those first meetings started happening. So, mm-hmm. so I understand. I mean, it, it, I think I was a little shocked on how quickly it, mm-hmm. it was just kind of, it was put out, but mm-hmm. I mean, I, I understood, I understood that. Yeah. So, so it's now just a couple of months away uh, until the move from Mill Valley to Ontario. Has your opinion about the sale changed since that time that you were just telling us about? or And, and if so, what do you think about it now? Uh, no, I still think it's a great idea. Yeah. I mean, I I fully support the seminary that they've got to, they got to move on, you yeah. know, to, to a, a pasture that can grow, <laughs> uh, a greener pasture that can grow, um, yeah. 
you know, I think there was just a lot of limitations here in Strawberry, in Mill Valley. Um, so, I mean, I, I still support it. Um, mm. I, I understand um, yeah. their, their decision. And, and I think that it sounds like they've got great opportunities down in, in, um, in South California, so yeah. Southern California. What do you hope the seminary will prioritize as it goes forward? Um, and on a parallel note, what do you hope that GGA Kids Marin will prioritize and do as it tries to continue the legacy that's already mm. been established here? Yeah, great question. So, I mean, obviously my heart and passion with within the seminary has been the preschool. Mm. Um I do hope that there will be some type of public recognition and appreciation and remembrance of the impact that this program, this department has had yeah. on the on the seminary, on the community. Um, you know, I, I don't think there's there's I don't think that there's too many other programs or departments here mm -hmm. in Mill Valley on the Mill Valley campus that are going to be shutting down like mm -hmm. like GGA is. Right. Um, you know, I mean, we're just, it's done. <laughs> yeah. Um, there's going to be no more. Uh, and I mean this, yeah, cause they're not relocating. They're not starting a new one in Ontario or relocating no. any of the staff here to go start a new one in Ontario. No, it's, right. it's, it's ending. Yeah. Um, and I, that's just my hope and wish, um, that, I mean, I understand it's, it's not, priority number one there's a lot sure. of other things sure yeah. but that there is some type of pause and remembrance of what it has been that yeah. that they don't that the seminary just doesn't leave with it just being oh, okay good we got that 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 one department you know it's <laughs> it's just been it's closed it's done Whew, we're, we're done with it you know one less thing to have to worry about but yeah. Just remember, I mean, it's been here since the beginning. And all the children, right. thousands right. of children. Right, 57 years, is that right, on this location? Yeah. yeah like, 57 years here. Of, you know, so yeah, thousands of children of kids, that have been yeah. impacted yeah. through the teaching and the ministry. And not just seminary families, but community, you know, those in the community. I mean, I right. know thriving uh the people that are in thriving ministries but then the the community here because they heard about jesus here yeah. through their kids so i just that that's just my hope um that it, it won't be forgotten that there'll just be a little a little remembrance yeah. um and then as far as you know the a new school coming in i love the fact that they're you know the new director does want to have new owner wants to have a remembrance of where yeah. it came from. Yeah. Um, that this that was that the impact this Christian school had on this area, um, and so I mean I think that you know I think it's a great way just to kind of honor that even just within the new name of it. Mm -hmm. um, so hopefully that will you know continue and this little beacon of light <laughs> here in this community because like i said there's there's i mean there's there's just not christian schools here yeah. and um we've got a great name and excellent reputation right. that brings people in and you know we're able to share the love of god and christ through this so yeah yeah well uh jonathan you have any other follow-up questions for christy i think that's all i have Christy, thank you so much for yeah. everything you shared with us. We're really glad to have uh, your perspective and your the history you've provided on the on the preschool and the anecdotes you've shared of your own personal time here. And um, we're all going to be well. We, Jonathan, and I agree with you that it's a, a great choice to to sell and to and to use that money to keep doing their the mission of the school. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, yeah. which is not to steward the buildings. Uh, at the same time, we will all be sad to see it go. Yes. We're to walk away and for sure. have it be so different. For sure. Um, for sure. So, um, yeah, just yes. again, thank you so much for thank everything. Thank you for having me. I, I appreciate being able to share. That was Christy Zerbst, current administrator and pr previous director for Golden Gate Academy, the preschool located at Golden Gate Baptist Theological Seminary. Well, 
Jonathan, I, I really enjoyed our conversation with Christy. Uh, I don't get to talk to her very often around the campus because she's busy doing that or elsewhere, and I'm busy doing my own thing, and so I haven't heard much of what she had shared. And um, what about you? What did you What did you enjoy about? particularly about that conversation. I really didn't know much about Golden Gate Academy's history Mm -hmm. related to when it became connected with uh, the teaching curriculum of the institution. Um, I really am glad to have found out about Dr. Mellick's involvement in uh, the program and and with the the educational processes. Right, with the changeover from an inside kind of service to the seminary students to an outward focused outreach to the local community. Yes. And I think we probably would have gotten different students or not gotten some of the students that have been really a blessing to the seminary if we hadn't had this as a part of our educational component. Yeah. It's been a real important part, I think, for several people. Um, It's real interesting to me to think about, as I mentioned at the beginning of this episode, the issues of trying to do what you're doing, where, in this case, you're trying to educate preschool-age children. You're trying to reach these families with the the gospel of Jesus Christ bringing peace and uh, healing and helpfulness to them. And then, at the same time, asking people for money. Yeah. It feels like a difficult challenge sometimes. Um, In a church setting, it's a lot easier. You're used to asking for tithes and offerings. Mm Mm-hmm. It just seems to me to be, it would be a hard task if I were in her shoes. Um, I don't think I'm built that way. I appreciate her and people like her being able to do that. On the other hand, it is a testimony to her compelling vision of what they're doing to help shape, educate, and care for these, these children. To be able to say, I need $100,000 so your kids can be safe while they're they're learning. Yeah. She She has a very clear idea of what will happen when they have completed their work teaching these kids. Yeah. It's also interesting and perhaps unique in a community such as this one is she was in probably in large part, fundraising directly to the parents of the kids. I would guess that in most preschools, when you do fundraising for something so big, you're going to cast a much broader net because you have to. Whereas in this community, they say, 100,000? Yeah, let's work that out. Let's (laughs) let's see if we can contribute, you know, 9% 9% of that or 12% of what you're looking for. Uh, I'm sure that's true in other communities as well, but um, it seems a particular feature in this setting. Well, next week, Dr. Glenn Prescott, Director of Theological Field Education, Chair of the Leadership Formation Department, an associate professor of ministry leadership will join us on that episode. That'll be a good one. Episodes release every two weeks with a new interview right here on your podcasting app of choice. iTunes, something on an Android phone, or for you uh, weird people on Windows phones. Uh, we're also available on YouTube. For details on our methodology for the campus... Re- that was a joke, guys, about the Windows phone. I don't know why Jonathan's not laughing. That was genuinely funny. Anyway, for details on our methodology for the campus relocation project that you're listening to right now, why are you still listening to this? I might have just insulted your phone. 
Uh, please listen to Episode 0, available in any of those locations I mentioned. Episode 6 with Dr. Glenn Prescott will be available June 10th. I used Windows Mobile for four years straight. We would like you to subscribe, <laughs> rate, or review this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not on the basis of my questionable taste in phone operating systems. <laughs> right, but more on the performance of the podcast itself. By the way, say five uh, Baptist Hail Marys and call me in the morning. Now, unless there's anything else from you, no. Jonathan Macadolphus, may God bless you as you go. He's already gone before. <laughs> Hey, we'd like to add a quick postscript. Uh, as you heard when we were talking in both the interview and the outro, providing education for, for children takes a little bit of doing. We would like to plug GGA Kids Marin. Uh, their website is ggakidsmarin.com. Uh, this is going to be a new uh, preschool here at the same location run by the same um, staff and teachers. It's the same Christian mission. Same mission, same goals. Adam and I believe in theological education and Christian education. Yeah. We wouldn't be working on our degrees if we didn't. <laughs> yeah. We want to help them out to continue fulfilling this mission of Christian education. It really is a great school. I had two kids go there, and I could not be happier with our experience and the education that they received while they were there. If you feel like you want to help out, you can go to GoFundMe.com, go to the search bar, search GGA Kids Marin. You will find an ongoing campaign that's already uh, gone up back at the beginning of April of this year called GGA Kids Marin Materials and Equipment. They're trying to raise $8,700 to buy some gently used, uh, if I understand it right, um, material for beginning this new business, for starting up this new preschool. They need these tables and chairs and uh, everything else that comes with this price tag. So if you can help out even a little bit, please go to GoFundMe.com, find this campaign, click the Donate Now button, give them a dollar, give them $20, uh, whatever you want as a one-time payment, or you can, you can come back and contribute every month or whatever. Um, every little bit helps. We believe education helps shape people to be positive contributors to the community. And we believe theological and Christian education helps shape people into the type of people God wants them to be. Yeah. If you believe in that same vision, please consider donating to help them out. That's right. All right, folks, we'll let you go now. Interview with Dr. Glenn Prescott two weeks from now. Bye.